The Sechus Ksubis Daf Nun Vav contains two primary sugyas, two machloksin, which we've seen in the Mishnah. The first is the machloksin between the Tanakhama and Avalazim and Azariah about whether in a situation where a marriage ended from Arisin, there was never any Nisuin, does the woman collect extra Ksuba that was promised to her or not? And then the Gemara will go to the machloksin between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir as to the topic of what happens when a man and a woman try to negotiate a lower ksuba than the standard that is promised, if that works or if it doesn't work. So we begin, we have the scene of the machlokas between the Tanakhama and Avlazim and Nazaria. The Gemara is concluding that machlokas now. That machlokas was about what happens when from Arisin, a woman is freed from the marriage, either through divorce or widowhood. And the husband had promised her extra ksuba, above the 200 for a psula or the 100 for a for an almana, he promised her extra. That extra promise, is that chal by the marriage, by the nesuin? Or is that chal already by the erisin? Why did he give it to her? So the Tanakhama said he gave it to her because of the love, because of the chiva of them getting engaged, and therefore it is chal from the erisin. And even if they never get to chuppah, she still collects that extra. According to Abuzim and Azari, he only promised it because of the marriage, because of the nesuin and not because of the Kiddushin, and therefore she does not collect that extra if they never get around to actually doing the Nisui. So the Gemara first is going to discuss who the Halacha is like, then the Gemara is going to say, in Rebbe and Azaria, we have two more questions. We can more fine-tune what exactly is the moment in which it's Chal, the Gemara is going to try to address them. So first of all, what is the Halacha? Who do we Paskin like? So the Gemara brings a number of Amirayim who weigh in on it. The Gemara says, Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Yisli Bar Avdimi, in the name of Rav, and Rav Nachman, in the name of Shmuel, the people of Nahardo in the name of Rabbi Nachman, and uh, they all say the halacha is like Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria, and that is the accepted halacha, the Gemara says, which we pass in the Bnei Yeshiva voted, and that's what they came up with. Now, Rabbi Yanai and Rav Nachman say that the halacha is like the Chachamim. Now, Rav Nachman, according to this version, it actually was Mikalel. He reacted angrily to someone who tried to pass in like the uh, Opinion of Rabbi Elazar ben Azari. So there we have the halacha. The halacha, again, as we said, is like Rabbi Elazar ben Azari. So now the Gemara says, therefore, that means that the extra money in the Ksuba is not promised from the time of Erisin, it's only from the time of Nisun. Now the Gemara says, what exactly is the time of Nisun? Is it the Chuppah or is it the Bia? So what happens if she does chuppah and she never does bia? What would Rav Lezab and Azariah say there? Did she earn the extra money or she only earned it by the actual bia itself? So the Imran wants to resolve this from a, from a uh, b'risa which is brought by Rav Yasef, which explains how she earns it. And it says, chibas layla harishin, the first night. So the Imran wants to say, first night, what does that refer to? Is that referring to chuppah or is that referring to bia? So on the one hand, if it would be referring to Bia, why does it say Rishon? I understand that it's at night, but why does it say Rishon? It could be all throughout her career. It's not only the one time. And if it's referring to the Chuppah, so I understand why it's first. The Chuppah only happens once. It's only the first night, but it's not Dafka at night. It could be even during the day. So what does first night refer to? Is it refer to Chuppah or does it refer to Bia? So the Gemara says it's more logical to say that it refers to Chuppah. Chuppah, I understand why it says first, because it's only the first night. And I understand that it's at night, even though you could have a chuppah during the day, generally the chuppah is at night, because the chuppah is meant to be close to the bia, and the bia is usually done at night. Now, if it's bia, though, I don't understand why it says first. There's no there is no explanation for that. Why it says uh, night, I can understand, even though it's mutter to do bia during the day in a darkened room, but generally the way that the people are supposed to do the Derech Eretz is to do it at night, and therefore that's probably why it said night. So therefore, the Gemara, according to many Rishonim, is concluding that according to Rabbi Lezab ben Azariah, it's the Chuppah and not the Bia. So the Gemara asks, what happens, this is our third Shaila, what happens if she is a Nida at the time of Chuppah? So the Bia doesn't happen, and even the Chuppah is not a Chuppah that could have brought to a Bia because she never had an opportunity to be mutter to him. Let's say he dies before she ever goes to the mikvah. So in a case like that, where the chuppah was a chuppah that was not roi libi, what would she say then? What would her Lezim and Azariah say then? Does that count as earning her the extra money? For the and the Gemara leaves that as a teku.
Gemara now moves on to discuss the second Mechokis, which is between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir, as we shall soon see his opinion of Rabbi Yehuda as well. But the Gemara first just wants to analyze the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says that it is possible to reduce the value of Iksuba by the woman writing that she received a certain amount. That is, Iksuba, let's say if her Iksuba is supposed to be 200, so if they want to cut it in half, she can write, I received 100. Even if she didn't really, she can write a special receipt, give it to the husband that says that I already that I already received half, in which case she can only collect the other half. So the most question is that seems to show that Rebihuda holds that in the case where you have half a loan paid off or part of a loan part of an obligation, you write a receipt. Now this is a machogis and Rebihuda seems to say otherwise. Now the Gemara quotes a Mishnah that says if somebody pays off part of a loan that he owes so as a machok is what he should do, and there's a problem with either solution. You have to find a way to record the fact that he no longer owes the full amount. So the simplest solution would be to just write a receipt. The problem is if he writes a receipt and he gives it to the if if the receiver of the money writes a receipt and gives it to the person who paid it. So for example, if it was a loan, if the lender writes a receipt that he received a repayment of half and gives it to the borrower, the borrower now has to watch that receipt. If he loses the receipt, he loses his proof that he already paid half and he'll end up having to pay the full amount. Now, it's not so easy to keep track of a receipt, especially because mice eat them. So that's one problematic approach. The other approach would be to say that you write a new star. The lender is holding on to the star, is holding on to the claim, the document of obligation, Let's say it said five hundred dollars. Now you write a new one for two fifty because half of it was paid off. That way, the lender doesn't have to hold on to a receipt. The borrower, the borrower doesn't have to hold on to a receipt. The lender, anyway, has to hold on to the document that says that he can collect. So he is to hold on to a different document. What's that avoids that problem? The problem with this solution is that now this new document is going to have a date from now, which means that any lands that were sold between the date of the original loan and the date of this loan are no longer mishubit. Because they were sold before the date on this document that he has here. So if the lender will then come to collect with this, he may lose out the ability to collect from certain lands that were sold previously. So what do you do? So the Gemara quotes this Mishnah that says over there, Rabbi Yehuda says you should write a new star. And Rabbi Yehuda says you should write a receipt. So the seems to show that Rabbi Yehuda says that you don't want to make the borrower have to hold on to a receipt. So over here, how come you say that the husband can be forced to hold on to a receipt? So the Gemara offers two answers. Gemara's first answer is Rabbi Yirmiya. He says that you don't have to hold on to a separate receipt here. It's going to go into the Ksuba document. The way you write the Ksuba is that it's a Ksuba of 200, like the Torah says, but 100 of it was paid already. And therefore, there's no separate document that has to be held on to. The woman who's holding the Ksuba says in there already that half of it was already received. Now, the that's Rabbi Yirmiya's approach. Abaye has a different approach. Abaye says that you don't have it written um, into the receipt. The It's just here, there's a different halacha. And this is a different case. This is a ksuba. And nothing was really paid. The woman's really just being meichel half of it. Shouldn't actually receive anything. So worst comes to worst, if the husband loses the receipt that says that he already paid half, which isn't true, so he'll end up having to pay the full amount. Fine, it's not like he paid, he's going to have to pay again. They negotiated a lower ksuba, the woman agreed to be Michael half, and now that Michael is going to fall off, he's going to end up having to pay full. That's not the end of the world. In the case of the loan, if the guy paid half, and you're not and you're going to write a receipt, and he's going to lose it, or be eaten by a mouse, he's going to end up having to pay again, that's terrible. You're making the guy pay twice for the same thing, and that can't fly. But here it's not such a big deal. Now, why doesn't each one want to say like the other's answer? So the Gemara says, the Bible didn't want to say like the Birmi's answer because it does not say in the Mishnah that they write a, a receipt into the Ksuba. It says seems to say that you write a separate receipt. Now, Rabiri didn't want to say like Abayi's answer because he would say that you, you shouldn't start making differentiations between what type of loan or what type of obligation. You should have a light plug, you should have Xera one out of the other, and uh, you should not allow any type of receipt in any circumstance. You shouldn't say this is okay, this one is not.
The Gemara now gets more deeply into the Machlokas itself. The Gemara is going to show at the end that there are actually three opinions. We're going to analyze the three opinions one at a time. Our mission only had a two opinions, but there are really three. What's the issue? The issue is, again, the man and the woman want to negotiate a lower ksuba. We want to write that he owes her a lesser ksuba than the standard 200 zuz for absula, 100 zuz for an almana. Are you allowed to do that? So the Gemara quotes that Rabbi Meir says, no, you're not allowed to do that under any circumstances. If you do, it's a bias nus. The opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, the Gemara says, is that you could do that, but he cannot just say it's going to be a lower ksuba. She has to write a receipt, like we said before. You can't just make a tanai in the ksuba. Here's your ksuba, but I'm changing the rules against what the Torah said. You can't make a tanai against the, the Torah halacha, it's masa mashakasa b'tayra, even if they both agree, they can't violate the rules. Rabbi Yaisi, the Gemara will show, later says you could, you could write whatever you want. The Torah said this is halacha. If they want to both be meichlet, they could. So the Gemara first wants to analyze the opinion of uh, Rabbi Yehuda. The Gemara, as we said, said that Rabbi Yehuda says you could be meichlet, but only by writing a shtar. It has to be written into the shtar itself. That means that Rabbi Yehuda clearly holds that if you would just try to be uh, make a tanai, that it should be a lesser amount, you would not be able to make a tanai to reduce the amount. So the Gemara has a kasha, because we show that Rabbi Yehuda holds that you could make a tanai to reduce the amount of a halacha. Where do you see that? So the Gemara quotes the Halachos of She'er, Ksus, and Ona. A man is obligated to give his wife those three things. We must discuss earlier what they are. Simple as Pshad, it's food, clothing, and marital uh, relationships. So if a man writes a Kedushin, or he, he doesn't write, he is Mekadish and Isha, and he says, on a condition that I don't have to pay you, I don't have to do She'er, Ksus, and Ona, that means that he's making it tonight verbally against the Torah. So there we have Machlech is what Halacha is. Rabbi Meir says it doesn't work. You can't make a tanai against what the halach is. But Rabbi says it doesn't work on a halachic iser or heter or chiv. So it doesn't work on ona, which is his obligation to have marital relations. But it does work on monetary things. You're allowed to make a tanai against a monetary amount. You're allowed to be mochel money. So sharing sos, food and clothing, she's allowed to be mochel, and therefore the kedushin's chal, and he doesn't owe that to her. So you see again that Rabbi Huda says that on a monetary issue, you could make a tanai and be mochel against what the Torah says your obligations are. So why can he not lower the amount? Why can't you not agree to be a mochel the full amount? It should be able to over here. So Gemara answers, Ksuba is a dirabonon. And the Rabbanon made their rules stricter than the rules of Shel Torah. People were lax in the Rabbanon, therefore it's stricter. You cannot make it tonight against it. She'er Ksus and Ona are Dorai, so you could make it tonight against it. So now they want Akasha. I'll show you a situation where you have a Dirabana where they did not make this chizik, even according to Rabbi Yehuda. What is that? That is the payroys that the husband has a right to get on her property. Now, if he wants to be Michael that, so there the halacha is that um, according to Rabbi Yehuda, it says in a Bryce in a Mishnah that he has to write it, but Abai explains he doesn't have to actually write it, he just say a Michil that he's Michael that right. So now this is a right dirabonon, and we said that he can verbally forego the right. So there, you're not saying that there's a chizik l'devreim. So what happened, you're telling me chizik l'devreim on a dirabonon, it has to be written, it's not enough to be verbally made a tonight. So Gemara answers, it depends if you're talking about something that is shchech, something which is common, something which is uncommon. Everybody has a ksuba, not everybody has the peyroi of the chizim so on Iksuba, the Rabbana did make a rule to make a chizik that it has to, if you want to change the rules, you want to be Michael the rules, it has to be writ- it has to be written. But on the Peros, which is not so common, they did not make something to change the rules. They did not make a chizik. So now the Gemara says, I'll show you something which is uncommon, that the Rabbana d- did make a chizik. And that's Demai. This is going away from Iksuba. We have a case which we've seen earlier on Daf Chaf Dalit. If two people come into town selling fruits and one says my stuff is not so good and the other guy's stuff is very good you should buy from him Uh, mine is new it's not fully dried Um, the issue is not here 
uh, Isser Chadash, but it's just that it's new, it's not fully dried. The other guys, his are well aged. Mine are not Metukian, mine still need Meiser, but his are Metukian. Uh, he says all these wonderful things about the other guy's things, so we don't believe him. We're very suspicious, according to the Tanakama, that is, because we're afraid that this is a deal they made in this town, and they go to the next town, they're going to switch around the favor. And that way, everybody's believing that everything is good and hunky dory, and that everything's Metukian, and Meiser was taken, and everything's great, but really, it's not. They're lying. So anyway, that's the Tanakama's opinion. But Peter says you don't have to worry about it. So that means that they did not make a chizik to make this concern according to Peter. Now this is rare. Here we're talking about the might. And here we're talking about a rare scenario. So if you want to tell me that in a rare scenario, <clears throat> this is common, the Gemara says. This is a common scenario. People come riding into town to sell all the time. And if you want to tell me that they made a chizik in a common scenario, how come Rabbi Huda here says they did not make a chizik? So Mark gives two answers. Abaye says, this is only a vadai. This is not a suffix. Whether something is not matukin or not is a suffix altogether, and they didn't make a chizik on that. Rav says demai. Demai always has more lenient rules because generally most amaratim are. They do take meiser, so the rabbinical obligation to take meiser from demai. They made a special leniencies in many circumstances. Therefore, this is not a concern. Gemara now focuses on the opinion of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir said anybody who lessens tries to write less of Exuba, the Bia is a Bias is Nus. They're not allowed to stay married to each other, it's a Bias is Nus. So Umar says, let's focus very carefully on Rabbi Meir's language. He didn't say any woman who gets less Ksuba. He said any situation where they write less Ksuba, they write a smaller amount than the Ksuba. That seems to imply that she's going to get the same Ksuba. Rabbi Meir doesn't say where she's getting less. Rabbi Meir says where they try to make her get less, they wrote a smaller amount than the Ksuba. That means that they won't get away with it. She will end up getting the right amount. And the Tanai is not going to work because it goes against what the Torah said. The reason, if she's getting the right amount, the, why is it a BS? It's a BS because she doesn't know she's getting the right amount. She has less of a smichas das. She doesn't rely on this. She doesn't rely on this. She doesn't fully give herself over. And it's not a real marriage. And it's a BS. It's but our problem is Rabbi Meir seems to therefore be holding that in a Ksuba, he wasn't allowed to make the tonight, and therefore it's no good, it's cancelled, and she gets her full amount. So the problem is that we said Ksuba's a Durabana. And Rabbi Mayer, we said, says that in the case where you're master on, you make a tonight against what it says, what it says in the Torah by Sharks and Aina, there it's Bakal. There it doesn't work. That implies that Ksuba Durabana, something which is only Durabana, if you make a tonight against what you're supposed to do, it would work. So how, how come over here we're saying that she would? Get her full amount. It's a dirabana and it should work. The Tanai should work, she should get less. So you want to ask is Rabbi Huda holds Ksuba is a Daraisa. And therefore, just like Sherexus and Ono, which is a Daraisa, you try to make a Tanai that is you that you're not going to give it the Tanai is butel. The marriage is chal, the Tanai is butel, you can't change the rules. Here also in Ksuba, you can't change the rules, so she's going to get her full Ksuba, even though you try to make it less. But as the Gemara said, even though she's going to get a full ksuba, it's still a BS. It's nice because she doesn't have smichas das. Now the Gemara goes to the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi said, you're allowed to do it. You're allowed to make a milva tenai al peh. It works. You, he could just say, we're negotiating a different amount. It doesn't have to be written with a receipt and all that. And everything's fine. You're allowed to negotiate whatever you want. The Torah said 100 for an almana, 200 for a psuva. It's fine. You could change it if you want, as long as everybody's in agreement. Asks the Gemara, we have a Mishnah that quotes Rabbi Yaisi that seems to say differently. It seems to say that you can't go against, you cannot make less of a ksuba. Where is that? So the Gemara shows the Mishnah. It has a Tanakama in her base. It seems to be saying the same thing. The Gemara has to explain it. What are they saying? So the Tanakama says you cannot say that a woman's ksuba can be collected from a certain amount of matata. And you can't set aside movable objects and say her ksuba is going to come from here. And the reason is because something might happen to that. 
it might get destroyed, it might go down in value. Now, Rabbi Yossi says, so the Tanakam says, Mipnei Tikkun Olam. The Gemara says, Rabbi Yossi says, the Mishnah that is, says, Rabbi Yossi says, it's not a Tikkun Olam, because it could go down in value, and it's no good. So they're both saying the same thing. They're both saying you can't do metatal, and you cannot set aside that the Ksuba has been collected from metatal, because something could happen to it. So Mishnah says, the difference is, if the husband takes responsibility to replace it if it gets destroyed. According to the Tanakam, the only concern is that it'll get destroyed. If the husband guarantees it, so there's no problem. According to Rebezi, even if it's not going to get destroyed, you still have another concern, and that is it may go down in value, and therefore she could lose what she's supposed to collect. So that's the mission. But what we see from here is that Rebezi is saying that it's impossible to have a situation where she's going to get less value. So if she can't get less value by the property that was set aside for her to collect the Ksuba from, where it's only a suffix, where maybe it'll go down in value, but basically doesn't allow it over here, where it's clearly going to go down in value. So how is that all right? She's she's agreeing to less of a Ksuba. So it shouldn't be okay. So Kamar says, that that's not a problem. Here, she's Michael. She knows what she's doing. She's taking a calculated... She's... It's worth it for her, for whatever reason, to be Michael and say, I'm giving it up. Fine. But in case where you're setting aside certain metal to pay, she doesn't understand, she doesn't realize it may go down in value. She's not being Michael, and therefore she's losing, and we want to protect her from loss.